Hey, all things Madison family. This is a special edition back to school episode that's a lot different from my usual. In this episode, I do collaboration with my fellow Kids Listen podcasters from around the globe and throughout the United States as we invite you into our shows and give inspiring messages for kids going back to school. This is especially important this year, I think, because there are so many kids out there like me who sheltered in place all last school year and didn't attend in person. For those who didn't attend in person, they will find it bizarre when the fellow classmates show up and the rooms, cafeterias, and playgrounds are full again after looking like a ghost town for nearly a year and a half. Talk about a real-life horror movie, or what they call art imitating life. Whoa. Anyhow, sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Thanks. Welcome to the Kids Listen Back to School Collaborative episode. Eight of us Kidcasters put together a short offering. Just like you, we each have a different perspective on this big event, especially this year. So we hope you enjoy listening to this creative buffet. Do you know who's looking forward to getting back to the classroom, even though it may mean wearing a mask? Fina Mendoza. Fina lives in Washington, D.C., where her dad is a congressman in the U.S. Capitol. Last year, school was entirely online. All right, class. Any questions? Margaret? Margaret, you have to unmute. What a doofus. Becca. I mean, how many Zoom classes have we had since March? Thank you, Becca. Margaret, you had a question? Yes, Miss Greenwood. Why do they call it a genius project? Well, it's your opportunity to show the world, or at least the class, that you're a genius in something, anything. It's a chance for you to research a topic, any topic, and make a presentation to the class. Instead of everybody working alone, we're going to break up into small groups. I'll let you get started now, and then it's up to you to choose one topic for the group and decide who's going to do what for the presentation. And I want primary sources for your research. Can it be about anything? Anything at all, Fina. You'll be graded on originality, passion, presentation, and accuracy. I'll be available if you have any questions or if you get stuck. All right? Now, I've split you all into groups. Fina, you're with Becca and Michael. Margaret, you're with Dion and DeAndre. Miss Greenwood, can I change groups? You may not, Becca. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Alfie, you're with Tahira and Tom. Check out the Fina Mendoza Mysteries podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Hi, friends. This is Madison Lauren from the All Things Madison podcast. Let me tell you, I'm so excited for going back to school this year that I have to do a poem about it. Want to hear it? Here it goes. For over a year, we were stuck in the house, stuck with my dad, not even a mouse. We sang, we danced, we swam when he didn't have to work. Us kids became professional Zoomers instead of doing homework. Most days were cool, but some were kind of crazy. Most kids got dressed for school, but others were kind of lazy. But now that summer vacation is over and last year is in the books, most of us kids who are stuck at home are ready for a different look. With totes and bags and backpacks galore, kids tumble into the hallways and into their teacher's front doors. And this year, there was not a sad face to be found. Everyone was excited to be back in person, where we could all be together on the playground. My wish to you is that you have a great fall. May you and your family be safe, and the same for us all. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Jonathan, and I make a podcast called Nature Narratives. Each Nature Narrative episode follows the amazing story of something in nature. For this special back-to-school episode, you will hear a nature narrative about one of the world's most fascinating animals. It's so unique that some say it's more than just an animal. A young creature is wakened by its parent. All summer, this creature has played, but this morning is different. 
This young creature is going to a gathering place to learn with other young creatures so that it can be ready to face the wild world on its own someday. This is the only species on the planet that has built structures for their young to gather together to learn from special older creatures who guide them in their learning. The creature steps cautiously out of its home. Looking around, it sees other young ones heading out as well. Some walk alone. Some get into a large metal box on four rubber circles. Some get on their own small metal frame on two rubber circles. This creature, however, is going to walk with one of its parents alongside. Every step brings the young creature closer and closer to the gathering place. With every step, the creature wonders who will be there, whether the older guide will be nice, and what new things will be taught. The young creature and its parent turn a corner, and there it is. Two doors stand at the top of some steps, and around the doors are walls with many windows. Other young creatures just like this one are scurrying around, some with parents, some getting off their metal frames, and others getting out of the big metal box that just arrived. A couple of them recognize this one and wave. Standing in front of the doors at the top of the steps, welcoming all the young creatures, is the older guide with gray hair, wrinkled face, and a warm, welcoming smile. Looking up, the young creature sees markings etched into the wall that read elementary school and a banner that says welcome back students the young creature breathes a sigh of relief it's going to be a great year this is not the end of the story from At Your Level, and since we're a variety show, I'm going to give you a bit of this and a tad of that. So, first, I decided I would ask you a very loaded question. How do you feel about going back to school this year? Okay, Charlie. So, how do you feel about going back to school this year? You know, I had a great summer, but I'm really excited to go back to school. You know, I'm going to a new school, make new friends. Hi, I'm Belle. I feel happy about going back to school with all of my friends. Hi, I'm Warren White, and um, I'm going back to school, and I'm a little nervous about it because some people in school don't wear masks, and I really think that everyone should wear a mask. I am definitely excited to go back to school. I'm excited. Hopefully, we'll not have to wear masks in school, but I'm also a little sad because, you know, summer, it was very fun. But mostly, I'm happy. Hi, I'm Roland. I am 11. And I'm excited and sad about going back to school. Because I'm going into middle school and I get to switch from class to class. But my friends, most of my friends aren't in my class. Hi, my name's Jesse. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eva. Are you happy I'm free. Are you happy to go to school? I'm Dominic. I'm 14, and I'm glad to go back to school because I no longer have to wear a uniform, and I now get to play drums in school. Okay, ready for something completely different? How about a bizarre ASMR? Listen closely. It's kind of quiet. Ready? What do you think that sound is? Do you need a hint? The Bizarre ASMR hint is always in the episode's title, and this is the Back to School episode. If you think you know what it is, you can record yourself on a phone or my website and send it to me. I'll put you in the next episode of At Your Level. I hope your return to school is super smooth. Hello, everyone. 
Kathleen Pelly here, host of storytelling podcast Journey with Story and published picture book author. I know this time of year, back to school, is very exciting for many of you, but also because this last year has been somewhat discombobulating for many of us, going back to school now in person might feel a little daunting, a little scary for some of you. So, I wanted to share with you some writing tips, because these writing tips are also living tips. What makes someone a good writer can also help them live life more joyfully and creatively. Ready? Here are my five writing living tips. Number one, read, 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 read. Reading stories or listening to them connects us to other cultures, to other ways of seeing the world. It makes our hearts bigger and better and kinder. That makes us better writers and better citizens of the world. Number two, create. Doesn't matter what. Paint pictures, sing songs, plant a garden, build a fairy fort. The more we create, the more there is to create and love. And that's what we were all born to do. Makes us better writers and happier people. Number three, learn your favourite poems by heart. This improves your vocabulary and your memory, but it also gives you some bolt of beauty, some jolt of joy to tuck away into your heart and lean on in times of trouble or when the worry warts start to close in. Number four, keep a special word book to store your favourite words. Some of mine are discombobulating, soporific, higgledy-biggledy. Basking in the beauty of words will make you smile and will help your writing. Number five, love the world. E.B. White, marvellous author of Charlotte's Web, said, The only thing I want to say in books, all I ever wanted to say is, I love the world. And if you write down one thing you love about your day, you'll never run out of things to write about, and you'll never run out of things to be grateful for. Wishing you all a wonderful start to your school year, and remember, as one of my favourite poets says, All will be well, all will be well and all manner of things shall be well. Cheerio then. Hey everyone, it's Ira from Best Whatever Ever Podcast. And as always, I'm joined by my bosses. Spencer and Scarlett. My bosses who are getting ready to go back to school. Yay! (laughs) Sounds like you guys have mixed feelings. All right, Scarlett, why are you excited about going back to school? I'm excited to make new friends. And Spencer, tell us why you're not excited about going back to school. Summer was so much fun and I just don't want summer to end. Yeah, it was a good summer. You did a lot and I I get it. It's tough to give up all the fun and go back to school. But I know you love school, which, you know, can be fun in its own way. Maybe. Aha, you're coming around. No, maybe means maybe. Sure, if you say so. But look, I understand. Back to school jitters, that's totally normal. You know what? Our first episode of season three is actually about that. It's a story about a girl who usually loves school, but this year she's nervous about going back for a very specific reason that I won't spoil. Spoil it, spoil it. Yeah, spoil it, spoil it. No way! But we're your bosses. Exactly. We tell you what to do. What's that? I I I can't hear you. There must be something wrong with my headphones. Anywho, it's okay to be a little nervous. But just remember what Scarlett said. It's a chance to make new friends. And see some old friends again. Ah, words of wisdom. That's why you're one of my bosses. All right, we wish everyone listening an awesome school year. I wish you all an awesome school year. Best whatever ever. I hope you have a great school year and uh, make so much new friends and have so much fun. Best whatever ever. Bye. Hello, I'm Dan Wendelin from the podcast Stories for Wonderful Children. Once upon a time, there was a child who was anxious and excited about returning to school the next day. This child had so many mixed-together feelings that sleep simply would not come. And so, the child's father told this story. 
Rupert stood at the edge and looked down at the ground far below. Then he took a nervous hop backwards into the nest. His sister Rupi swooped down. Are you ready? she asked. Mom will be here any minute for your flight school day. I've decided to stay in the nest a couple more days, Rupert replied. The ground is very far down, and I don't think I'm ready to fly. Rupi shook her head. I know you never wanted to be the first robin of spring, she tweeted, but if you don't start flight school today, you're going to be the very last robin of spring. That's fine, Rupert whistled back. My friend Rebecca almost got eaten by a lion on her flight school day. Rebecca was not eaten by a lion, Rupi chuckled. She saw a house cat inside a house through a window, and it was asleep. Come on, perch on the edge. Mom will be back any moment. Rupert peeked again at the ground below. I'm afraid of the edge, he said. Rodrigo's mother pushed him off the edge, and he almost hit the ground. But he's fine, said Rupi. You just saw him fly past chasing a beetle. Besides, Mom's not like that. Oh, she's back. Rupert scrambled up to the edge of his nest as his mother landed beside him. Hello, dear one, she sang. Mom, said Rupert, do I have to fly? I like our nest. His mother cocked her head to one side. Of course you like our nest, my love. But the world is wide and wonderful and beautiful beyond song. It awaits the beat of your wings. You won't push me, will you? His mother touched her head to his. It's your flight school day. Fly when you're ready. Rupert peered at the ground far below. Then he looked up at the beckoning blue of the sky, at his friends circling in the air, at the deep green world all around. He stepped off and fell for a moment. Then he opened his wings, caught the wind, and soared. The father finished his story. The world awaits you, too, he told the child. But the child was already asleep dreaming of the grand adventure of the first day of school. There's one thing about going back to school that always bugs us. You have to spend more time reading what the teacher or librarian wants you to read and less time to read what you want to read. But there's still time to sneak in one more book. How about one of these? Hello, my name is Lenny. I live in Waverly. My favorite book is The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Burr Baker Bradley. This book shows that people don't have to be in your family to truly love you. The main character, Ada, has an unresolved club foot and a bad mother. It is set in the time of World War II and Ada is in London. My favorite line was, you saved my life. And Ada says, so we're even now. Uh, my name is Adam, and I'm from Escondido, California, and I'd recommend reading the book Hive because of its suspense and its great story. Hi, my name is Marin. I live in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, and my favorite book is The Elephant in the Garden by Michael Morpurgo. It has lots of action and adventures and it has a really awesome plot it keeps you reading and you don't want to put it down my teacher read this book to my sixth grade class and me and it was an amazing read we all loved it hi my name is shimmy laura davis i live in shiloh north carolina my favorite book is judy moody because she is so adventurous smart funny curious and a little moody bye We've got lots and lots and lots of book suggestions at our website, bookclubforkids.org. Or you can just subscribe to the podcast, Book Club for Kids. 